Oh, hello, Grenada Carico P. Oh, I'll catch me there, boy. <laughs> Grenada Carico P. Monica and the world. What's happening? What's happening, my people? Welcome to another program, people. This is where it all happens. We're talking about the good, the bad, and the Mikey. Things that you have not heard anywhere else. You will be hearing it right here on the program. Things that you don't see anywhere else. You'll be seeing it right here on the program. Tell somebody to tell somebody to tell somebody else that the things that yeah oh yeah yeah real thing happening right now as we start in the program you hear me phone going off going off going off going off um we have a lot of things to tell you about people now happening in career coup a police investigation you understand we got in a dead you know um there's a lot so wrong in that dead whether or not it was a homicide by the time the program done i will tell all of that because hold on we go no we go no take all the time you know we don't do we walk we don't do we walk so even one media host say this and another one say that we go tell only what the truth is yes anyway um here we're going on people a lady in Guyana is dead she has eight children she's a victim of domestic abuse for years and refused to leave so you know what happened the same husband turn around and kill her we could tell all about that as well um, there's a free seminar how to survive college it's an online seminar. We're going to be telling you about that. Does the name Sean look ring a bell? It's an incident that happened all the way back in 2006. I don't know if you all remember when they killed a little boy in, in Trinidad with a cane thing. Never forget that case. Never, ever forget that case. Do you know that the person who performed the autopsy is also saying that this case is not leaving her. It's not leaving her over, she has done autopsies on over 5,000 bodies. And this case remains at the back of her head every time she has to do her work. I mean, anybody who have heard about this incident all the way back in 2006 would remember even if I called Sean's name. It was so gruesome, probably the worst you would ever hear. So we gonna talk about that in a while, all right? And a woman in Ghana wants to sue a private hospital for the death of a baby. She says she go there to make sure that everything went well with the birth, but instead she walked to the hospital without her baby. You know that dread. So we have that and more to tell all you about when we come back on the program. So take all the time. We're taking a con break and we're coming back to some real news in Ole Lili Lolo. Stay there. And by the way, hold on. For those of you who don't share the program yet, please make sure to share the program. Because you see, when I want to share the program, that's how other people get to know what's happening here, here on the business. So share the business. We're coming back. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. I see friends shaking hands saying, Make this convoy a special one with Spice Isle Jewelry. This is the sale you've been waiting for. Get up to 40% off on our stunning collection of silver and gold jewelry with purchases above $115. Visit our two locations on Grenville Street St. George's and the Spice Land Mall Grand Dance to see our fine selection of necklaces, earrings, rings, and our unique handmade pieces. Step into Spice Isle Jewelry and shop in air-conditioned comfort with a friendly, helpful and courteous staff. We also pay the most for scrap gold and trading. All repair service is second to none. Treat yourself or even someone special. This convo with something special from Spice Isle Jewelry. 
call us on 440-3155 or 440-6648. Sale ends August 31st. Spice Isle Jewelry, operating since 1986. And we do so with pride. Give your kids a new start this term with back-to-school deals from Quartz. Save big with great deals store-wide. Get desktops, laptops, tablets, backpacks, and so much more. Get it all now with Quartz Ready Finance with nothing down and nothing to pay for 30 days. Get a new start back-to-school with great deals from Quartz. Bringing value home. Alrighty, and uh, we are back with you for another Mikey Life program. Folks, we always take um, uh, a moment to say um, hello to those of you who are um, looking at the program for the first time. It is our pleasure uh, to have you with us on the program, and we want to invite you to continue looking. All right, don't just make it your first and your last. And again, to all the uh, loyal viewers of the program, we'd like to say thank you for uh, being as loyal as you are those of you who are viewing via uh, cable TV we're talking about um, channels 10 standard definition and 11 high definition we want to say thank you uh, to you as well all right that's the W P G 10 all right yeah when I hear ping 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 so it's information we gain on the program why we on the program we gain information one time you understand um, relating to uh, a, a little incident but I small thing um, when the time comes for us to discuss that we will tell you the traffic regulations for the funeral of the late Dr. Winston Thomas at the St. George's Anglican Church. And, and um, folks, it's, it's, it's a, a funeral that so many people are talking about. So we know that um, there must be some sort of arrangement uh, because of the expected amount of people that is expected to uh, attend that funeral, right? So public parking on the right side of uh, Lower Lucas Street in the direction of Market Hill from the Law Office of Danny Williams and Associates to the top of the Catholic Youth Secretariat. On the left side of Market Hill in the direction of Grenville Street from its junction with Church Street to Market Hill Pentecostal Church. On the right side of the Lower Church Street in the direction of the Grenada Cooperative Bank from the intersection with Market Hill to GTM Building. Church Street from its intersection with the with uh, St. John Street to its intersection with Market Hill. In terms of no entry, Upper Church Street from its junction with Market Hill and Lucas Street from 8 a.m. to um, on Friday 23rd August. It doesn't give us an end time, right? But it's from 8 a.m. And that's for the no entry. Also, Upper St. John Street from its junction with Grenville Street where while the funeral funerals are in procession right and there's also going to be another funeral as well at, uh, right? at the junction of uh, Old Fort uh, Public Road and Lucas Street and Upper Church Street where it intersects with uh, uh, Cemetery Hill right um, so I, I told you that there was going to be another funeral as well so that will be for Agnes Roberts all right and that's going to be happening at the Cathedral of Immaculate Conception so there's going to be uh, two funerals happen, happening simultaneously, uh, one in the Anglican Church, the other at the Catholic, all right? Now, in terms of no through road, Lower St. John Street from its junction with Halifax Street on the conclusion of the both funerals. No parking, Church Street from the junction with uh, St. John Street to its junction with uh, Cemetery Hill, Cemetery Hill from its junction with River Road to its junction with Old Fort Public Road on both sides. Old Foot Public Road from its junction with uh, Cemetery Hill to the entrance of uh, Presentation Brothers College on both sides of the road. And uh, one way traffic, uh, Cemetery Hill Public Road and Old Foot Public Road will be made into uh, one way traffic as vehicles will be allowed to flow only in a certain direction from 12 p.m. Now, the general public, you're, you're asked to please be guided accordingly. No, I, I just said this and some people will, will be like, well, Mikey, get on with the news. But here's what. Many of you on the program tonight, when you meet that kind of um, divergence and so tomorrow, cussing, how come nobody does say nothing? All right, anyway, <laughs> let me do that one day. The Royal Grenada Police Force wants to apologize uh, for any inconveniences likely to be caused. 
Now we have to tell you about interruption in services at the Ministry of Health, Social Security and uh, International uh, Business Administrative Division, uh, Ministerial Complex. You now the public, you are hereby informed that services at the Administrative Division of the Ministry of Health, Social Security and International Business at the Ministerial Complex in George will be interrupted from 12 noon on Friday 23rd, 2019. Now this is as a result of the granting of permission to the ministry's staff to attend the funeral service of Dr. Winston Thomas, who passed away on July 27, 2019. Now, Dr. Thomas was attached to the Accident and Emergency Department casualty of the General Hospital in St. George's, where he worked for over 20 years. Now, the Ministry of Health Social Security and International Business sincerely apologizes, they say, for the inconveniences this may cause. They say their offices will resume regular business operations as of the 26th, 2019 at 8 a.m. Right. No order. The, the next thing that I have to tell all about, boy, police. They are currently investigating the death of an individual in karaoke. Jesus. In karaoke. You know? Um, circumstances still kind of sketchy. You understand? But we, are, we have been told that an 81 year old, 81 year old was found dead at his residence in Mount Royal. In Kariaku. Now there is an investigation ongoing. Yeah? The body was found earlier on this week. You know, and they say it was found by a family member or so. You know? And just before coming on the program, we heard that there's been some new development that we can't talk about until, you know, certain things manifest. But um, the death of this man is being investigated as a possible homicide and uh, the police maybe by tomorrow will be able to say more all right yes so we will have to leave that one day for now how are we looking for time folks there is a seminar coming up boy and it is called um, surviving how to survive college it's an online seminar and it's going to be from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. This is not an ad. This is telling you what's going on on August 31st, Saturday. Understanding what lecturers expect. The importance of studying on all this. How to survive your group projects and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Me don't believe in group work. Listen, when I go back in school and think, nobody come and get me to do no group work. I go and do me thing for myself. You understand? Because you see that kind of group work, they should call it teamwork. It's a difference. You understand? Because to call it group is to define the sect. But to call it team is to define the involvement of the members of the group. So we're calling it, not, we're not going to be calling it group. We're calling it teamwork. You understand? Because you see, yeah, some of them, they don't just wait. For everybody else to do work, and then when they come in the morning to submit their part, they don't do it. And that's true of the whole team. And I understand sometimes the, the lowest grade that you get for a particular subject is as a result of quote unquote group work. In fact, they had to stop group work in school, in college, and in here. That don't have no value. <laughs> anyway, you are invited to attend this seminar. Now, they are saying that they have gotten um, some very good people some corporate citizens persons from the corporate who come on board to make this a free seminar it was first being offered at a cost and we have understood now that jonas brown and hubbards have jumped on board and Colter fett has jumped on board as well and we are also willing to lend our support in whatever way that we can you understand so yeah so for the people who are um interested in this you can uh, check out the um, Miss um, Rosalind.
you on Facebook or you can check out the Icon Leadership Seminar page they're on social you know you can check them out on Facebook and them can add things alright right. so Miss Roslyn Douglas is the one who facilitates this seminar alright you're looking good oh yeah we have a um, how are we going we have a Grenadian lady who has um, you know taken up an initiative yeah to empower women in in church you know we call it a nice little thing you understand the girl Jimmy uh, she's uh, spearheading this this project Julian and I'm so yeah you understand so this is something that is new she says uh, she's launching this new ministry and uh, according to her this ministry was created to assist Christian women with creative ways to express their internal and external beauty while remaining ma remaining modest and classy and sexy who say Christians cannot be sexy you know what I'm now according to her this endeavor will help boost the confidence of women worldwide through fashion and fun you know what I'm saying? So she launching that thing to actually I think it's, it's it's going to be launched tonight, right? Yeah, man. They say the lives of Christians will be transformed. The world would see a synergy of the professional aspects merged with the spiritual aspects of life through pictures, stories, and testimonies. All right. So you can. They, I think the the um they putting up a nice like a Facebook page and website and all that kind of thing. All right. Yes, so that one go pretty. You can contact Jimmy Julian on Instagram and on Facebook as well for more information on this. All right, good. Oh, yeah, we're moving. Oh, the lady can anyway, lady that dog there. Right, oh, yeah. The next thing we have to tell all that about, boy, we are moving on. All right, are we looking for time? So, we were talking about this incident. All right, that dates back all the way to 2006. Yes, where this little boy, boy, was killed. God bless his soul. Now this woman says that she's a pathologist. She's troubled by Sean Luke's autopsy. So she says that as a result of this, she prefers to deal with adults. Eh? She's been haunted by this thing for all these years. People are not even making it up. I, I let me let me let me check on the program. Is there anyone on the program who remembers this case? Hmm? Anyone who heard about this case today cannot. T I mean, back then cannot tell me that they forgot about this case right now. You understand? She's a forensic pathologist, Dr. Islin McDonald, Boris. They say that she's nearing retirement. Yeah? And she has described the autopsy of 13 year old. Yeah, I was saying he was 10, but no, he's actually 13 years old. You know? No, actually, no, no, no. He was six years at the time. In fact, it was six years at the time, you know, doing the math. Six years at the time, people. Six years. Sean, look. Now she's saying that it is the most unforgettable case that she has done. Even if she has done 5,000 plus autopsies over her 18 year career. Yeah? Now to take you back to that case, somebody said they can't remember, Honesto. Y'all, okay, oh, oh, Glenna said I remember. Yeah, yeah, hey Karen, to refresh your memory, Luke was found murdered in a cane field near his Henry Street Orange Valley um, home, right, on March 28, 2006. Y'all remember that? <sighs> no, McDonald, the pathologist who did the autopsy, Days after the boy's gruesome death, remembered 
how he was found. Sodomized with a sugar cane stock that ruptured his intestines and caused severe damage to his internal organs. Eh? And according to the autopsy, he died of internal bleeding. That happened in Trinidad. Oh, you mean you can't remember that? Some say they remember, some don't. Anyway, so you don't remember if you were not aware. You can't remember what you didn't know. But for those of you who heard about it before, could never forget that. I, I, I kid you not. All right? So she has a wealth of experience and is saying that that kind of experience had her lose faith in humanity. Mm. She says she always will remember Sean Lucas. And she says she remembers it for different reasons. She says, for now, I prefer not to have any child to deal with. A pathologist and a professional, you know. She says she just prefer not to. I would prefer to do an autopsy on an adult. So now, when children are involved, I'm always in a different mood. Eh? He says, I still believe in the godness, uh, sorry, in the goodness of human beings, despite my job. I always expect good, not bad, but when I see really bad, it just tends to jerk me a little more in the sense where I say, I think this could have been a bad, but it was really bad. Now listen, 13 years ago, after Luke's death, uh, the pre preliminary inquiry into Luke's killing was completed. All right, now they found out there were some, some guys, I think it was some teenagers or whatever, all right? Uh, a 15-year-old and a 12-year-old. Huh? <laughs> but if it makes you, if it would make you sleep better today, the persons who were responsible for his death, they are still at a maximum security prison. All right? But um, I'm just telling you this because this woman who is now about to retire says that this is, um, this is really um, taking a toll on her all right even though it happened about 13 years ago now we are moving on this one is from Guyana uh, a woman who was having her first child is now threatening to sue the hospital that uh, dealt with her because her baby died 36 hours after he was born. Twenty-two-year-old Devi Balram lost her first baby on August 6, 2019. The child loved for just 32 hours. Speaking with the newsroom at her lot 117 Good Hope East Coast Demerara home, Balram said she wants justice for her child, whom she had named Arya. We all want justice for this child, so we're hoping that they come forward. It's just that I am, it's my first child and I'm very, very disappointed in that hospital. I had confidence in them, so just need justice for my baby. Balram said she joined the clinic in December 2018 and never had any issues. However, on August 4th, the date for her delivery, she explained she was struggling to deliver her baby, but the nurses kept telling her to push for half of an hour. Knowing the baby was stuck there for about half hour, and, but they keep giving me confidence that, okay, she's about there, push one, two, three times. And the baby came out, the baby was blue, I was not breathing. So <clears throat> they did the alert, whoever came in the room, checked the child. She was not breathing, they start to um, give her oxygen, pump oxygen to her like about half hour before she make a sound and they rush her into the nursery room. <coughs> From then I was like unconscious, on and off, pain still, and um, the baby, well, a lot of things that they did to the baby, <coughs> they did not have like medical stuff in place for her. For example, the oxygen, there was an adult mask using her on the wrong side. More other stuff like um, injections. Um, they said she had seizure. 
but when asked about how many times and the different like how many times it happened and for how long they couldn't give answers the baby was later resuscitated but passed away just 32 hours after Balram is accusing the nurses at the private hospital of negligence. When asked about the baby, they, they said that they're supposed to do a MIR on her, but they did not because they didn't have um, medical staff in place. A portable um, oxygen they had need, they said they need to move her because of the seizure and I cannot, but they say they have it, right? But they did not. So. Later, on the 6, 1 p.m., I happened to wake up and walk into the baby room to see how she's doing, and then as well, she, said she passed away. According to the death certificate, the baby died from cardiac arrest due to severe birth asphyxia, intracranial hemorrhage, a type of bleeding that occurs inside the skull, and upper gastrointestinal bleeding. Severe birth asphyxia is caused by decreased oxygen before or during the birth process. Nandrani Kunja, Balram's grandmother, told the newsroom that the report was lodged with the Ministry of Public Health since efforts to get answers from the hospital proved futile. She is threatening a lawsuit against the doctor in charge and the hospital. You pay your money to have a safe delivery. You pay your money for your baby to be alive. You pay your money for all the equipment that they should have had in the hospital. Right? That is what you pay us for. And nothing was in place. The newsroom reached out to the hospital for a comment at the weekend but was told that the doctor in question was unavailable until Monday. When contacted earlier on Monday, we were told that the doctor is unavailable and the medical superintendent is on leave. P.B. Katun reporting for the newsroom. All right, thank you very much. And while we are there, I just wanted to share another story with you. You know what we always say about um, people being in abusive relationships and uh, sometimes we tell ourselves that our abuse would be different from someone else's. We feel that we can make it. We feel like we know the abuser so much that one day they are going to get better and stop abusing. abusing. Not everyone lives to tell a story. And in this next story we will tell you, and a woman who has given eight children, birth to eight children in, in, a, in a marriage as well, has lost her life due to domestic violence. This is in Guyana again. 44-year-old Venet Headley James was stopped to death by her husband, 45-year-old Sherlock James, at around 12.50 hours on Wednesday. The incident occurred at the Lot 68 sideline dam the Backlist East Coast Demerara home. The couple has known each other for 26 years and were married for 20. They share eight children, with the elders being 26 and the youngest being nine years old. James physically attacked his wife and one of their daughters on Sunday night, after which she fled to a neighbor's home. When the major visited the community of Nabaklis on Thursday morning, the neighbor who did not want her face on camera, Brenda Haywood, said it was on Sunday night she learned that Finnett was being abused by her husband of 20 years. Two or three nights ago, she ran over at me with a stab wound here and one at her neck and then she told me the small daughter get a stab in her back so um i was counseling her i said man i don't like what is going on i said you see many times these things just lead to murder abuse me say you shouldn't be silent about it just speak out about abuse right the woman said the abuse seemed to always stem from allegations that the mother of eight is involved in an affair. But you see, every time she starts working, every time she starts working, you accuse her of having some man. It's some man. Then she starts dressing and, you know, making herself nice. It's some man. But she didn't deserve this. He could have walked away. She leaves eight children. You know, it is very sad. I'm a mother. You know, I'm a mother. Vinette will usually sell stationery and other items in front of her house and sometimes travel to the market to ply her trade. Police in a report on Wednesday confirmed that the couple had an argument over an alleged extramarital relationship. Haywood said on Wednesday she heard shouting at the house and then saw Vinette in a car covered in blood. The police also confirmed that on Sunday night, James, who is a gold miner, assaulted his wife and fled the area. One of James' colleagues, Hamley Lynn, 
who did not want his face on camera, told the newsroom that the incident could have been avoided if the police acted on this report Sunday night. Struggling to come to grips with what occurred, Lane, known as Tony, told the newsroom that Bennett ran out of the yard and begged him to help her. I was woken by songs of calling for help from Bennett and um, Lich, um, Navi, that's the eldest daughter, saying, Tony, come on up, man. Daddy just jumped my mother. So by the time I come around from out my house, a car was passing at the same time and pick her up. So by the time I meet her, she was already on her way to the hospital. He recalled that he and James were scheduled to travel to Peruni Region 7 on Tuesday night, but the trip was cancelled after the driver refused to go on the journey. Lynn recalled speaking with James on Wednesday, but saw no signs of what was to follow. In fact, he said he has never known James to be an abusive person. He's a person that will go to the extent to make sure your family get what they need. After stabbing his wife in the neck with a kitchen knife, James fled the scene and was found by police in a bushy area with a wound to the neck. The newsroom understands that James was seen breaking a bottle before he was found and it is believed that he used the same bottle to inflict the wound to his neck. He was escorted to the Georgetown Public Hospital where he is presently receiving treatment on the police guard. BB Katoon reporting for the newsroom. Thank you very much on this one. Yeah, you understand? So guys, I mean, come on. Um, ladies, men, if you know you're in an abusive relationship, you don't have to stay there, you know? And sometimes you would know when it, it has gotten too bad. Yes? And um, yeah, some people say that they would stay because of the children and so on. But what's the point? If at the end of the day, you lose your life. You leave the children without a mother and probably in the hands of the same man who is going to now turn that abuse onto the children so you do not necessarily have in fact you don't have to stay in an abusive relationship oh where yeah, go 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 take me and my three children well get, the coffin could you understand so I, i'm saying this to say that hey you don't have to you don't have to settle to that yeah believe in yourself believe that you can make it and yeah, yeah it's possible all right yeah you try to kill it <laughs> i don't know that story you stand up and take it like a man you're trying to kill yourself Anyone with information regarding the following individuals, you are requested to please urgently contact 4351124. If you hear your name, you are also asked to please call 4351124. Rondell Gibbs, Frequente Housing Scheme. Everall Marlon Mitchell, Palm Rose, St. David. And uh, uh, Brian Frank, Vendome, St. George. Again, please call 4351125. 1124, sorry, or if you know them, please ask them to call the number 435-1124. We have more to tell you about, boy. Um, a pastor charged with sexually assaulting a male worshiper eight times. So we're going to tell you about that. And a Jamaican woman pleads guilty to arranging 28 sham marriages in the United States for non-citizens to obtain green cards. We come back with more after we take this very short break right here on Mikey Live. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. I see friends shaking hands saying, Make this carnival a special one with Spice Isle Jewelry. This is the sale you've been waiting for. Get up to 40% off on our stunning collection of silver and gold jewelry with purchases above $115. Visit our two locations on Grenville Street St. George's and the Spice Land Mall Grand Dance to see our fine selection of necklaces, earrings, rings, and our unique handmade pieces. Step into Spice Isle Jewelry and shop in air-conditioned comfort with a friendly, helpful and courteous staff. We also pay the most for scrap gold and trading. All repair service is second to none. Treat yourself or even someone special. This convo with something special from Spice Isle Jewelry. 
call us on 440-3155 or 440-6648. Sale ends August 31st. Spice Isle Jewelry, operating since 1986. And we do so with pride. Give your kids a new start this term with back-to-school deals from Quartz. Save big with great deals store-wide. Get desktops, laptops, tablets, backpacks, and so much more. Get it all now with Quartz Ready Finance with nothing down and nothing to pay for 30 days. Get a new start back to school with great deals from Quartz. Bringing value home. Okay, we are bringing value home. And uh, folks, the next thing that we have to tell all you about, boy, is that the pastor last night we tell you about a priest. And uh, today we are telling you about a pastor that has uh, found himself on the other side of the law. All right, yeah, we're giving you a picture too. What do you mean? Yeah, yeah. full bolts right now. Pastor, for Chris, pastor Christopher Pereira has been placed on $75,000 bail, charged with sex crimes against a man who worshipped at his church. Pereira reappeared before the Chaguana court on nine charges, which includes eight acts of burglary. What? Now, the offenses allegedly occurred at the church between April and June of 2019 in a counseling room, you know. Eh? And people go for counseling. What did anyway? It happened in a counseling room allegedly at the Help Foundation and Transition Center. You understand? According to news reports, bail was granted by the magistrate. You understand? Um, with certain conditions, is to stay 100 meters away from the victim, report to the police, bring in all his documents, and so on. Eh? So the next court appearance is going to be on September 19th. Hmm? Buggery, you know, people. What? So that means the whole. Anyway, let me that talk. I don't really want to get that into my brain because you can un learn those things when you learn about them. So let me just terminate that story and move on to another one. You understand? Who who celebrating birthday on the program day? Yes, Louisa. All you. Um, the next thing that we have to tell all you about, boy, sham marriage. Now, you know, the other day we were telling you about a Grenadian who's gotten himself on the other side of the law in the U.S., right, for immigration for fraud, right? Alleged immigration fraud. Now, this one is about a Jamaican woman who has gotten herself in trouble, a Connecticut woman who federal prosecutors say helped arrange 28 sham marriages to obtain immigration benefits for non-citizens has pleaded guilty. Now, the Connecticut Post reports that 35-year-old Jodian Stevenson of uh, Bridgeport pled, pled guilty to one count of conspiracy to commit immigration marriage fraud in federal court in New Haven on Monday. Prosecutors say one of the sham marriages was between Stevenson and a U.S. citizen. Stevenson is actually from Jamaica. Now, officials say she introduced the couples, organized the marriage celebration and ceremony, and coached these people on how to make their relationship and marriage appear real. Now, check this out, people. She would charge up to 20,000 U.S. dollars to fill out immigration paperwork and complete the process. Now she faces up to five years, in, well then how much? Eh? She faces up to five years in prison. Well, it's a what? It's a it's a risk. What well, take it away well, fine? If you're charging every client at twenty thousand US with a chance of getting caught, maybe maybe not. And if you get your jail, you're making a five. Eh, hey, man, married on? Eh? You know, every job has <laughs> every job has high risk. I didn't know about no job that doesn't have a risk, right? Your risk is just five years in prison. Who knows? You might get a scholarship when you come out inside. Anyway, lately that one. And uh, folks, we have coming up for you the national report. Somebody say she passed good. <laughs> eh? Papa, oh, she's a big girl in the business. 
Oh, you see, listen, all the real Jerry Dollar comments and things, you know. Yeah, so anyway, let's leave that comment talk right now. And uh, we're getting ready for the uh, national report for you. We have the weather coming up, and uh, yeah, we will take another. Watch, Queen, I had the best. Between me and all, yeah? Honor all the old talk. Honor all the old talk. You know, Grenada had the best gun. Yeah, son. Anyway. And when you when you when you go when you go and get con, don't play selfish. Get con for two. Alright? Anyway, later. <laughs> oh god. Never a dull moment in the country, you know. Let me take a quick break here, papa. And I ain't taking a break. I'll give you all a um a word from our sponsors. And then when we return. We have the National Report. Make this convo a special one with Spice Isle Jewelry. This is the sale you've been waiting for. Get up to 40% off on our stunning collection of silver and gold jewelry with purchases above $115. Visit our two locations on Grenville Street St. George's and the Spice Land Mall Grand Dance to see our fine selection of necklaces, earrings, rings, and our unique handmade pieces. Step into Spice Isle Jewelry and shop in air-conditioned comfort with a friendly, helpful and courteous staff we also pay the most for scrap gold and trading all repair service is second to none treat yourself or even someone special this convo with something special from spice i'll do it call us on 440-3155 or 440-6648 sale ends august 31st spice i'll do it operating since 1986 and we do so with pride Oh yeah, somebody tell me Mikey share. Oh, so wait, I must share my con with you. Why sharing that? I don't know where your mouth come out. Me don't share no con with you. Well, break it. I must break anyway. Here, folks, we have for you the national report. When we come back, we will have the weather. <music> Mitchell Foundation enhances education package to beneficiaries. Details to this story and more in the National Report. With the details to the news for Thursday, August 22nd, I am Rikisha St. Louis. Not only has it enhanced its education package to beneficiaries, the Keith Mitchell Foundation has also included students from Karyaku as scholarship recipients for the first time. Selected successful CPEA students are now receiving a scholarship for seven years instead of a one-year grant. 75 students were presented with their scholarship packages during a ceremony on Thursday. The annual scholarship vouchers are valued at $500 and will assist in the purchase of books, uniforms, and stationery. Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell charged the students to persevere throughout their educational journey and keep focused. He says in life there will be challenges, but these should not define the outcome. Life story is not an easy one. It's not easy. And you don't give up easily. The more educated you have, the better you are, the better you are prepared for the challenges of your own life. So don't treat this lightly. Chairman of the Foundation, Sir Royston Hopkins, spoke about the decision to improve the package. He says there is need to make an even greater contribution within the education sector. We've moved not to a five-year scholarship, to a seven-year scholarship. Because we want to ensure that when you go through secondary school, you're able to go to T.A. Marshall Prop, um, College and do your A-levels or the, whatever you refer to it as, your, your first um, so degree, to be able to qualify for government scholarships. Because government has, a, I mean, unbelievable amount of scholarships. Member of the Foundation, Hermione Griffith, highlighted the criteria for maintaining the scholarship for the seven years. Each year, the student should strive to attain a pass mark of 65% or over in terms examination to maintain their placement on the scholarship program. 
progress card and report books. We would like for at least to have the progress card and report books reported to us so that we can monitor the children's progress. The foundation will make periodic calls to the school. Where necessary, there will be meetings with teachers and principals with regards to attitudes, application, and overall deportment of the student. The foundation has been guided by the motto, education is a ladder of success. Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell, says the fiscal affairs of the government will be conducted differently, so it will not be business as usual come 2020. He told the gathering at the 2020 budget retreat that the Fiscal Responsibility Act and fiscal rules make provision for a new way of operating with accountability mechanisms and new governance arrangements for good practices. Dr. Mitchell says this new fiscal regime does not mean Grenada is being constrained. Rather, more will be done without spending more. We have to conduct the fiscal affairs of the government differently. The new normal is fiscal discipline, fiscal transparency, and fiscal accountability. We should not have had to, to deal with a structural adjustment program to make us reach to this some of the characteristics and variables I mentioned. But we are where we are, and we have gone through what we have gone through. So now we have to take it forward. Dr. Mitchell says as the 2020 budget process begins, it requires a mindset shift from government and stakeholders to view the bigger developmental picture for Grenada's future generations. The policies and programs funded through the national budget, budget I intended to bring real solutions to real problems that affect our families, our neighbors, and our friends in all communities throughout the length and breadth of Grenada, Caracol, and Petey Martinique. The budget process, therefore, requires a mindset shift towards the big picture of developmental results that we want to achieve as a nation. This is the National Report. We'll have more news after the break. The house was shaking, shaking, then said the story here, babe, crack, 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 and the roof had gone. Man, I was so scared, I nearly wet myself. Only those who have lived it can truly understand the devastating fury of a hurricane's wind. The house across the road just get up and roll over. Hurricane force wind, it's a hazard. Hazards, take control, reduce your loss. You can hurricane proof your home, for example, Make your roof more wind resistant by using screws instead of nails in its construction. Find out more about hurricane force winds and other hazards at your local disaster office. A message from the National Disaster Management Agency and Sidera. Welcome back. Grenada's Culture Minister, Senator Norland Cox, has cited as unfortunate the comments circulating in the public domain, which claim that junior Calypsonians are owed a parent's fees for participating in the semifinals. Traditionally, junior Calypsonians submit their recordings and a selection panel, listen to the songs, and select the finalists. But in 2019, a different approach was recommended by CEO of Spice Mask, Kelvin Jacob, to give more exposure to the young artists. Based on what I, I, I heard on, on, on the, from the news item, um, and speaking to the CEO in particular, I, I think it was a little bit unfortunate because the CEO, when he came in, one of the first things he said to me is that, uh, Minister, look, um, I don't like the setting and how the, the juniors have been treated. And he said, look, let's try and do a, a, a semi or a preliminary um, with the juniors instead of just choosing them out and just putting them into the finals. So my first question to him is, how are we going to pay for that? And he said, look, we are going to have the stage up in Progress Park. Um, I will have that, that, that vacant day between uh, the, the semi-finals for the, the Soka and then um, we have the finals for Calypso on the Sunday. So he said, let's use the stage. We already have the stage. I didn't think about that. And um, hence the reason why 
we give it a we give it a go this year we said look, look let's try it out and see how that go if that can be uh, uh, another event and so when i heard remarks uh, that the, the ceo doesn't care what the young people i mean i i, I was a little bit uh, stunned because he was the one that made that suggestion senator cox says there was no commitment given to remuneration and it is therefore unfortunate that there was an expectation of such what we would have done this year was just uh, uh, basically a trial run to see how that goes. And so we had never uh, given any commitment to, to paying any, any, um, any appearance fees for that, that event uh, at all. And so um, I don't know what was communicated uh, to, to parents or, um, and to the kids. And, and so it's, it's quite unfortunate that they have this expectation when in truth and in fact uh, there was no intention uh, for that to happen and, and we are feeling a, a bit bad that that was communicated and, and it makes it seem as if uh, Spice Mass is, is creating some um, unfair um, treatment to, to the juniors and, and that, is not, that is not the case. Senator Cox says it is a challenge when there is miscommunication on issues that can lead to unfounded allegations. It's a bit unfortunate. I mean, if that was raised before as an issue, then that is something that we could have could have addressed. Um, because look, honestly, we when we when we sat and and we were looking at the, the, the prizes uh, for the juniors, uh, we believed that it was way below par, and so the increase that was applied even to the first prize for the juniors was much more than what we announced in terms of 15 to, to 10 to 15 percent. Uh, for prizes. I can tell it was probably about 40%. Extensive support is provided to the junior Calypsonians to write their songs and for payment of the band fees. Prize money for the junior Calypsonians was also increased far beyond the percentage granted to other artists this year. Finally, Grenada has taken another step in its efforts to preserve the country's historic and cultural heritage. A week-long workshop involving heritage watchers and employees in the Ministry of Youth wraps up on Friday and is part of the process to chart the way forward for cultural preservation. Minister for Culture and Civil Aviation Honorable Clarice Modest says they have developed a relationship with Colombia in this vein following dialogue with the country's former foreign affairs minister. She looks forward to a long-standing relationship. So sometimes you think something is old and it's dated and it's no good, but um, there are many people worldwide who would be attracted to a country um, by its heritage. And, and, and the, the reality is this is one of, the, one of the things that sets each country apart from the others because our history may be similar, but there are a lot of differences. And... Um, the way we care about our heritage would, would help to, um, to identify us and set us apart as a people. So um, I spoke to the minister, it was one-on-one -on -one in a conversation, and she agreed to come and assist. And then she sent a team within a few days um, to come to see what we had. And that's where the conversation started. We've had a lot of difficulties um, in getting it to work, but... Um, Ultimately, they are here, and um, in the meantime, I've had conversations with other countries like Cuba, which has done extremely well in that, with Jamaica that has done extremely well in community tourism. I believe it is important to identify all of those structures, all of those um, um, areas where things happened in our country, and um, because you, you may not have a structure. If you take, for example, Lipa's Hill, or Caribs Leap in St. Patrick's. It may not be a, a, a structure per se, but it is a site, it's a location where something very important happened to the original people who lived in this, in this country. So there's a lot to be documented, there's a lot to be categorized, there's a lot to be preserved, and there's a plan that needs to be put afoot. Speaking with the assistance of an interpreter, Patricia Grillet, Colombia's advisor for Heritage Direction, Martha Pinier, says they are looking forward to continued dialogue with the Ministry to preserve the heritage of Grenada. It's a pleasure to share with you all the systems that we have to protect our heritage and also the mechanisms that we have been constructing and how it has been implemented. Based on the experiences that we have had along all this time constructing our system, 
We hope our experience is useful for you because we have seen that you are very rich in natural cultural heritage that needs to be included in a system that is sustainable and through which you can manage it. That story just ended the national report for today, Thursday, August 22nd. Let's recap the top story. Keith Mitchell Foundation enhances education package to beneficiaries. On behalf of the entire news team, I am Rikisha St. Louis saying thank you for joining us. Until next time. All right, thank you very much, Rikisha. And uh, we are just getting reports of uh, uh, an incident that is now happening, and uh, that has just happened, in fact, in the uh, Westerhall area. We are understanding here through sources that there have been multiple injuries uh, following a vehicular collision in that area. We've been able to obtain uh, some footage um, live on the ground right now from one of our sources there that we are able to share with you. Uh, the cause of this incident is uh, not yet known as this is just coming into us now but of course as usual we would uh, look into that and uh, get some more info for you as soon as possible what you can do is as usual check out our uh, facebook page uh, probably a little bit later on or certainly tomorrow god's willing we'll be able to have an update for you but one of our sources says that multiple uh, persons uh, have sustained uh, injuries uh, following this incident um the severity of those injuries we are not certain about however again we are committed to getting more information for you as it comes to hand all right folks and uh, we would like now to uh, take a look at the weather um, there's a possibility um, that we may get a, uh, just a little bit of showers tonight we have to uh, keep our fingers crossed all right winds are easterly to southeasterly at 5 to 15 miles per hour uh, becoming variable to calm at times sees slight waves two to four feet in open waters all right uh, light showers overnight is possible in terms of tomorrow god's willing um, we are expecting the weather to be partly cloudy with a low chance of morning showers the temperature minimum 25 degrees celsius max 31.5 degrees celsius or oh, it may even be a bit hotter you know it does feel a bit hotter too Winds northeasterly to easterly at 5 to 15 miles per hour, becoming variable to come at times. Seas slide waves 2 to 4 feet in open waters. And uh, that's our weather uh, for today and uh, tomorrow. That's our weather forecast for today and tomorrow. All right, um, relating to that ambulance, to that situation there, we are, heard, we are hearing that um, there are persons waiting on ambulance uh, there's uh, somebody who was um, severely injured there's a gentleman according to one of the sources severely injured uh, injured and uh, someone a female seemed to have broken a limb all right and uh, that's information that we are getting again from one of our sources on the scene of this crash um, which has happened in the West Hall area um, that's information that is just coming into us right now here on Mikey Live. Now that's as far as we can go for tonight. We want to thank everyone of you um, for joining us and remind you that you can join us tomorrow, God's willing again, uh, for another Mikey Live program. God bless you and your family. All right. And uh, before I go, let's just say hi um, to a few persons on the program. All right. We have with us Rolanda. Kathleen, Shireen, Jane, Ezra, Theresa, Eugenia, um, Lorraine, Santanico, uh, Noreen, Angel, John, Asha, Dolores, Seferina. Um, we have Shomin with us. We have Arthur. Um, we have, uh, did I say Theresa? Uh, all right. We have, I think I see two Theresas. We have Linton, we have my mom, we have my sisters, my whole family. We have Cynthia, Trevelyn, Eunice, Joyce, Kirin, and Camille, and everyone else who are on the program, who is on the program actually. Irma, I see that you're there as well. Danica, I see that you're there. Everyone who's on the program right now, I want to say thank you to you guys. All right, Rachel and Patsy, I see that you're there as well. Ruth and uh, jean sharon rush you always there merry light to you there as well all right guys jennifer and zilan blessings all right guys god bless you have yourself a good time in five four three two one
Yeah. No. Good night, everyone.